Welcome to the next episode of How to Play. Today's game, Scrabble. As always, let's make sure we have all the pieces necessary for playing. You will need the Scrabble scorecard, the Scrabble board, the rotating part of the board, the letter holders, the instruction manual, assuming you ever read it, 100 letter tiles, a dictionary only to be used in challenges, so no cheating, and an hourglass for a time limit, which is optional. To set up, make sure you have all four stickers placed on the letter holders, then grab the four plastic pegs and place them in the rotating piece. Then use the other four pegs on the main board. Finally place the board on top of the rotating piece. Place all the letter tiles in the bag. There are two ways to determine who goes first. All players draw from the bag of letters, and whoever draws the letter closest to A goes first. If you grab a blank, then you automatically go first. The second way is to have everybody draw all seven of their letters from the bag and place them in their piece holder. Then whoever believes they can make the longest word goes first. Each letter has a number in the lower right hand corner indicating how many points it is worth. A blank is worth zero points, but can be used for any letter of the alphabet. There are also spaces on the board you want to compile your letters so that you can get additional points. A double letter score multiplies the tile that is on top of it by two. In the example, if it was a W, it would be four times two equaling eight points. A triple letter score multiplies the letter on the tile by 3. Again, if it was a W, it would be 4 times 3, equaling 12 points. If any of your letters form the word across a double word score, then it multiplies the entire word by 2. So if you've just spelled the word swore, you would add the total of all the points, S being 1 point, W4, 0, 1, R1, and E1, which would give you 8 points. But since one letter was placed over a double word score, you would multiply the total by 2, giving you 16 points. And finally, there are the triple word scores, which multiply your entire word by 3. So using the same word, swore, as before, we can multiply that instead by 3, and we will have 24 points. Let's say S is on a double letter score, and O is on a double word score. First, you would multiply the one point of S from the double letter score first before adding or multiplying any other letter. And so, 1 times 2 is 2, which you would then add to the rest of the words, which would make 9. Then you multiply 9 by 2 to equal 18. If you use all seven letters from your tray, you will get a bingo, which gives you 50 additional points in addition to the points you've already earned. Once any of these tile spaces are used, they can never be used again. Now let me show you the rules by playing a sample game, whereas you are player two and your opponent goes first. Make sure you have seven letters from the bag. Now your opponent has just created his first word, swore. The first word must go along the pink star in the center of the board, and the first player that places the word there also gets an additional double word score. It is now your turn and you must build off any word on the board. You cannot start a word that does not connect to what is already on the board. All words that are a part of speech, including those of foreign origin, as long as they are part of the English lexicon, ones that are archaic, obsolete, colloquial, or slang are accepted. However, words that are not accepted are words that are always capitalized, which most referred to as the proper nouns, abbreviations, prefixes and suffixes standing alone, words requiring a hyphen or an apostrophe. Everything else is perfectly legal. Now, if you have a really bad hand, you may put face down any number of tiles you wish and draw that many from the bag. And then, the tiles that you put face down, put into the bag. This is so you don't accidentally draw the letters you just got rid of. However, you must skip your turn after doing this. However, let's pretend you had a good hand, and on your first turn, you spelled the word WARN. Don't forget to add your double letter score for the letter O. Then, make sure to grab three letters to replace the ones that you used. On his next turn, your opponent played Tor. Now, let's assume you don't think that's a real word. You can challenge. You would then use the dictionary to look up the word. And since it really is a word, the person that challenged loses their next turn. But let's assume you're smart enough not to challenge this word. 
Always remember that when you possible to build off the end of a word in the opposite direction so that you get points for two words. Just make sure that they actually spell words. For your second turn, let's just assume you put an S on top of warn to form sworn. Now your opponent makes a word you know is not real, so you challenge. Since it is not in the dictionary, he then skips his turn and cannot play any other letters. Play continues until one player has used all of his letters, or until nobody has played a whole turn, because it's impossible to do so. Then whoever has the highest score wins. There are also many variations on the game that you must agree on before playing. The first is allowing anyone to rearrange any word on the board as long as you build off of it. For example, you could take the word hat and rearrange it to spell T-H-A and then add a T to it to spell that. In this instance, a blank was used to form the letter N to spell worn. At the beginning of your turn, if you have the letter N, you may put the letter N there and take the blank so that you can use it for a future time. You may then spell your word as there is no penalty for doing this. Exchanging letters means that you can exchange any letter on the board for one that you own as long as it spells a word on the board. You do not get any points for doing this, but you can do it if, say, you wanted to take that T because it can help you make a better word for your turn. There is no penalty for doing this, but you can only do this on your turn at the beginning. You may allow people to look through the dictionary. This is especially better for younger players as well as people who wish to expand their vocabulary. There are also two variant rules for quicker gameplay. One involves using nine tiles instead of seven, where a bingo is still seven tiles. The second is a game over when one player reaches a predetermined score, no matter how many tiles are left. This depends on each player deciding whether or not they are a beginner, intermediate, or advanced, and then picking from the chart below how, uh, how many players there are to determine how many points they need to win. This attempts to give a balance so that beginners can play advanced players without fear of being overwhelmingly defeated. Also, there is no limit to the number of times you can use the same word. Many people have invented a variant of the rule where you can only use one word each game. Now there's plenty of strategy involved in this game, but you'll have to learn most of that on your own. So go find a friend, and if you can't, there are millions of users connected through the World Wide Web.